What is going on fellow web developers? My name is Tyler Potts and in today's video we'll be covering Slim PHP, specifically making an API for Slim PHP. Now, what is Slim PHP? Slim PHP is a competitor of Laravel and other big web applications like that where you can create um, some simple um, but they will be powerful web applications and APIs. Now specifically I use Slim PHP for APIs so that's what we're doing in this video. Now you do need to have some things set up before we can continue with this video. One of those is a Apache web surfer or a and a MySQL uh, database setup ready for you to use. Um, I'm going to be using MAMP. You can use MAMP or MAMP Pro. I'm going to be using just the free version of MAMP, although uh, I could show you with MAMP Pro if you guys want. Um, it's just super simple. You set it up, you set where your app is, and you just click start, and it will start a uh, Apache server or an Nginx server, and also a MySQL instance, which is all we need. You're also going to need Composer. Now, Composer is a package manager or dependency manager for PHP. Um, if you're from JavaScript, you'll know Node or NPM, um, which is the JavaScript equivalent of Composer. Now, finally, you're going to need something to be able to test your um, API with. So I'm going to be using Postman and you can come over here to get this, postman.com. So let's close that. You can come over to getcomposer.org to sell it up. Click on get started and get it all set up. Um, NM MAMP, you can just click downloads and get one of these downloads here. It comes with both MAMP and MAMP Pro. Obviously, you have to pay if you want to use MAMP Pro. So let's close that. So Slim PHP, here we go. So let's head over to our terminal to get started. Today's video is brought to you by Cloudways, a managed cloud hosting platform for PHP based applications. Cloudways takes over all server management and security hassles to let you solely focus on your business. Their custom stack provides performance boosts, managed backups that keep your apps safe and a staging environment that lets you test code without breaking the live site. Plus, pre-configured composer and integrated git make deployments a breeze and you get a choice between five top cloud providers, including DigitalOcean, AWS, Linode, GCE, and Fulture. With Cloudways, you not only get flexibility, but peace of mind. So if you're an agency or an e-commerce store owner, Cloudways is a great fit for all your managed hosting requirements. And I particularly like their slogan too, moving dreams forward. It fits what they do, don't forget to use promo code TylerP to get up to one month free hosting with $15 free hosting credit. Okay guys, so I'm in a directory here where I'm now going to run Composer, uh, create project slim forward slash slim and then we're going to give our project a name. Now this one's going to be slim API YouTube and I'm just going to hit enter. Now this will set up our project and I'll see you once that has completed. Uh, it completed before I could even finish my sentence. So that's how fast it's set up. Awesome. So now if we just list out here, you can see we've got Slim API YouTube. So let's CD into Slim API YouTube. Uh, let's clear this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up with Visual Studio Code. So I'm just going to run code dot. And there you go. We've got our Slim API here. So now you can see here we have this Slim package, which comes with all the different things we need for our Slim. But before we do that, let's get our database set up. Okay, so let's head over to our browser here and let's just type, actually, sorry, we need to open up MAMP. Um, so as you can see, I'm just gonna open up MAMP and that's gonna come here, it's gonna ask us to, you know, get MAMP Pro. I have MAMP Pro, but I don't really wanna use it right now for this because it's much simpler to use a free version. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click choose a path and as you can see here, we can come out of the Slim API and we can go into our new one, Slim API YouTube. I'm just gonna click choose for now, although we're gonna to have to move that into the um, public folder once we're ready. I'm just gonna click OK. And secondly, I'm just gonna quickly run start. So now this is gonna start our Apache server and also our MySQL. Now it's gonna ask me for my password. There you go. So now as you can see here, it is now set up. So what we need to do is go tools and unclick PHP my admin or you could just go to localhost forward slash PHP my admin. Now what we can do here is I can create a new slim API, click create 
And then in here, we're gonna set up a table, but we'll do that in, actually, you know what, let's do it all now. We're gonna create a friends table. And number of columns, four, that should be fine. Click go. So what we're gonna need inside for here is an ID. Uh, we're gonna leave this all at default, but click auto increment, which is gonna ask us to make it the primary choice. We're just gonna click go. And there we go. So that's now created our ID. We're then gonna set up an email address. Uh, which could be a far chart of 255. We're then going to have a display name again, a far chart of 255. And finally, we're just going to have a phone number, which is also going to be a far chart of 255. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to hit save, and this should create our database or our table with the correct structure of ID, email, name, and phone. Perfect. So, we're just going to insert some data here quickly. We're going to leave that blank, and what we're going to do is we're going to uncheck that we're going to say email address let's just say uh, test at example.com display name test one and phone number will be uh, 01234567289 solid number there let's just post the same phone number there they share phone numbers this one is going to be test two and we're going to have um, uh, example at example.com again and then we're just going to hit go down here insert row insert two rows so if we go back to browse you can see we have two entries uh email or test one and test two so there we go that's all we need for our database we can actually close php my admin here close that and now we can go back into our um, api here or our vs code and what we're going to do is we're going to create some new folders now the first folder we're going to create is going to be the public folder now in the public folder it's going to have our main stuff we're actually going to have a file called index.php and then we're going to have a ht access file in here so we're going to say dot ht access and the reason for this is because we need to set up our roots so when we set roots inside of our index um we need to be able to link them and we're going to be using this here so rewrite engine on and then we're just going to rewrite everything from the index.php file here so there you go so that is what we need so it's actually on the documentation here um it i believe it's somewhere nested in user guide um but it would tell you that um anyway so there you go so we've got our index file um set up here and we also have our public folder set up. so now we need a, another folder and this is going to be called our routes and inside here we need a file called friends.php and this is going to be our route slash controller for our friends routes routes however you guys want to say that <laughs> the next thing we need to do is create one last folder and this is going to be a config folder and inside here we're going to have a file called database.php and this is where we're going to create our new databases and connect to our databases. So let's start off in index here. So inside of index, what we're going to do is we're going to say PHP. Well, in fact, we're probably going to just take what is here at the top here, these ones right here, and paste it inside of here so basically what we're getting here is we're getting the response interface and the request interface so using http we can get the response and the request so we can send back a response in each api route and we can also get the request like the parameters and anything they pass to us like the body we're then getting the slim app so we're able to get the uh, slim uh, base app stuff and then we're going to use fender auto load here so what this is doing is it's going to go into this fender and get out anything we need so using the auto load it's going to load all the dependencies we need automatically so that's now done let's actually start by creating an app and set this equal to app factory and create so this go create us a new app and an app is used to basically set roots so we're going to set an app here which is going to be equal to a get parameter and we're going to give it a function now the function will take a request um, request and a response which will be response now we in here can now say response and we can actually say something like get body which will get us the body of the page and we can write to the body of the response and we can write something like say hello world and then we just need to return our response. 
So this is actually erroring right now. I think I've made a little mistake somewhere. So request, oh, there, no. App, get, oh, <laughs> I'm missing the um, external. Wait, is it that way or that way? Oh, I see what I did. I accidentally put this in the wrong, I put these curly brace in the wrong place. That's fine. So there we go. So we now have the get app. So what this does is we can use like get, we post, delete requests here and you can make these requests. So now if we just use get, we could now go down here and just say app run and this will run our app when we call this file. So what we need to do is go back to our uh, map and we need to quickly change this from slim api youtube to public folder click save and click ok now this is going to restart our surfer open this back up and if we click my website and just go to the main you can see we get hello world so let's go back here now let's say we say hello tyler hit save and refresh because it says hello tyler now another thing we could do is we could pass through a um, parameter here and we can say this is called name so to get this, what we're going to need to do is we're actually going to need to get the an array, which is called args, which stands for arguments. And inside of here, we could then just put dots and we can say args. And then we're going to pass the name here. So let's say net name so there we go so we've got the response well now we're just going to say hello and then whatever we pass through so if we refresh here something's going to be wrong but if we now pass through let's say a name tyler you can see it says hello tyler if we say hello dave you can see it says hello dave and then we can also say hello world and we get hello world so there you go so that is how we can pass some parameters through let's put that back just forward and let's just leave it at hello <laughs> We're going to leave it at hello. That's it. That's all done. There we go. So that is just a simple setting up a route with Slim. So let's actually set up our friends routes on the left. So or actually, you know, we need to actually connect to a database. So what we're going to do is go into our database and we're going to create a class for this. So we need to create a PHP and we're going to say class database and we're going to set up a private host, uh, which will be equal to localhost. We're then going to set up a private user, which will be our username, which in my case is root. You'll need to use whatever username you're using. And then we're going to have a pass, which again will be equal to root. Um, this is MAMP's default, by the way. And then we're going to have a final private database name, which will be slim. Well, it actually be whatever we named it, and I can't remember. So let's just quickly go to PHP my admin, and it's just called slim API. So we're going to take that, go back, and we're just going to paste that in there. So we're getting the slim API. We're then going to create a public function called connect. And what we're going to do in here is obviously connect to the database. So what we're going to need is a connection string. And the connection string is going to be using PDO. So we're using PDO, which takes a connection string, um, which will connect. It's just an alternative to using my SQLi. Uh, and we're going to say host is equal to dollar this host and then we're going to say d database name is equal to dollar this db name so that's the connection string we'll be using we then need a connection which is going to be equal to a new pdo and we're going to pass through the connection string we then got to pass through a username so we're going to say user and then a password so we're going to say pass and that is all we need to do to connect. Now we're going to actually set some attributes. We're going to say set attribute, and we're going to say PDO attribute error mode and PDO error mode exception. This is just so we pass the right errors through and it passes, well, it passes errors through. So what we're going to do is return the connection. Um, once people call this so back inside for our index what we need to do is we need to actually require that so we're going to say require the underscore underscore dot slash and we're going to say dot dot config forward slash db dot php so we're just going to get our database now this isn't going to do anything on its own um but to connect let's create our friends uh roots now 
So inside of here, we're just going to get the same stuff as what we have here. We're going to get these three namespaces. Um, and then we're going to create the app again, which will just say app factory oh, create. So we're going to create another um, set. We could call this friends or whatever we want to, but I'm just going to call it app. I'm then going to say app dot get and this time we're going to set up a friends forward slash all and we'll create a function which takes a request request and a response response and what we're going to do is we're going to set up a, a, a query so we're going to say SQL um, and we're going to say select all from and then we need our database name or our table name which is friends and then we're going to put this in a try and catch we're going to say try to connect to the database so we're going to say new database and then we're going to get the connection which will be db connect once we've got our connection we can then create the statement now this is just uh standardizing P stmt is how uh, people write these statements you can write however you want but that's what most people use uh, as the naming structure and then we're going to use the connection and we're going to query our um, SQL or our, we're going to get our um, SQL query here and we're going to basically pass it through this query now what we're going to do is we're going to say our friends is equal to statement fetch all and we're going to say PDO, and this is we this is how it returns the data. So we can return arrays, we can return array objects, we can return different things. What we're going to do is we're going to fetch object. Now we're going to say database is equal to null. Um, so once we've actually made this request and we've got the friends, we're going to set it to null so we don't get any errors when we try and do another request. Um, and then we're just going to say response is equal to get or sorry get body so we're going to call the function get body again and now this time we're just going to write in json um encode and we're just going to pass through our friends for now um and finally we're just going to return the response um we're also going to pass through with header so this is how we can pass head pass headers through and we're going to set the content type to be application forward slash json and finally we're just going to have a with status code which is 200 if it works so that is that there we now need to make a catch which is going to be a pdo exception and that's just going to be e and we're just going to say if we have an error we're going to create a new array um, with a message which lowercase m sorry my bad uh, a message and this is just going to pass through the error and we'll use get message which will get whatever the error message is so we'll pass that through um, and then after that we're just going to say return also we're going to say response is equal or response get body write and then we're going to say json encode and we're going to say our error and then we're going to return response with the same stuff here. So let's go pass this through. But instead of status code 200, we're going to pass through status code 500. And there we go. So that should now catch any errors we have. So now we can try this out. Well, we need to go into our index first and actually include it. So let's go over to our index. And what we're going to do is below our get our first factory here, we're going to create or we're going to require our friends roots or friend roots we're then going to say uh require underscore the underscore dot slash dot dot slash roots slash friend oh if i can spell today friends dot php okay so now we've added this we can actually go back to our local host and just type in friends forward slash all and you can see here we get the returned um, database entry so you can see we've got the test from our database test one and test two which are both from our database now we're not going to be using the browser for any more of this so we're just going to close this close this and even close this now we're going to be opening up postman 
Now, Postman is going to allow us to create, it's going to allow us to make requests to our API. So what we're going to do here is let's just close all these from a previous tutorial. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new route here. We're going to pass through HTTP locals, friends, all. And all we're going to do is hit send. And there you go. You can see there's the request we've made. And we've got all the information we pass through. So let's go back to our code here and let's go to our friends. So this is how we get our friends. Now, how will we um, get a singular friend? So what we're going to do is we're going to literally copy this. We're going to go down here. We're going to paste this. And we're going to say, instead of all, we're going to say ID. So we're going to pass through an ID. So if instead of doing all, we just pass a singular ID, we'll be able to use that ID. So we're going to create an array, args, and we're just going to say ID is equal to args ID. We're then going to create our SQL and we're going to select all from friends where ID is equal to ID. And that way, we run the exact same thing here. But instead of doing fetch, we, in fetch all, we're just going to do fetch because we're only going to get one. And we can just rename this to friend so it, it matches and it's a bit more even. And there you go. So that is how we're going to get a singular friend. So we're just taking the same response or the same code, duplicating it and adding in a different um, route. So let's go back to Postman. And now let's create a new route. Let's just copy this one. Let's look at an ID. So we'll get test one with this ID of one. Paste this in and just put one. Now, if we hit send, you can see we only get through our one uh, result, which is the one we want. So what happens if we put two and we send, you can see we get number two. Now, what happens if we put three? And actually, it just comes back false, basically saying nothing It's not working. Uh, there's nothing there. It's just perfect. So let's go back to just two. There we go. So now we can get all our friends or we can get a singular one. But what happens if we want to add friends? So now what we're going to do is we're going to copy this again. And we're going to put this down here and I'm just going to change this to be add. But we're also going to just make a post request. So we're not just going to be making a, a get request. We're going to be making a post request now. And we're going to keep all the same things in, but we're going to remove this ID. We're going to actually get an email and set it equal to request. And we're going to do get param and we're going to get email so we're going to be passing through a body with this post request and this is how we're going to get all of this information so we're going to display name it's going to be equal to a request again get param and this time it's going to be you guessed it display name let's duplicate this go down to here get this and now this last one is going to be phone so we're going to be getting our phone number so now we're going to create a new sql so instead of using a select we're going to say insert into friends uh, and we're going to pass through the fields we want to pass so we're going to say email display name and phone and then we're going to say the values and now we're actually going to do this here we're going to say email display name underscore please and finally phone now the reason we're doing it like this and not passing through variables is because you're supposed to bind your variables to your um sql especially when passing through values which need to be cleaned so what we need to do is after we've done this in our try and catch we're going to use the same connection but we're actually going to remove this here this statement and we're going to have oh sorry we needed the first statement but we need to call it prepare Let's remove this second one for now. So we've got our statement connection. This time we're going to prepare our SQL. And in our statement for each um, parameter we want to bind, so email, display name, and phone, we're going to say bind param. And we're going to pass through the name. So that is going to be email. We're then going to pass through the variable we want to bind it to, which is email. So let's copy this a couple of times. Let's duplicate. And this is going to be display name. And finally, there's going to be phone like that. And now that's going to bind all our um, variables to our query here. Now, before we finish up, we're going to get the result and we're going to set this to statement execute. And this is just going to execute this query and pass back a result. So instead of friend, we're just going to say result here and let's see what happens. So all this can stay the same. So now we've got our post. Let's go back to Postman, create a new 
let's just copy this across. But instead of two, we're going to say add, and instead of a get request, we're going to do a post request. Now, for this to work, we need to have a body, and we're just going to select raw JSON. And now in here, I'm going to pass through um, email, which is going to be equal to our email address. So let's just say Tyler at test.com. We're then going to, this needs to be in a quotes. Um, we're then going to get our display name, which is going to be. Um, Tyler pods and then finally we just need our phone number and for all of you wondering my phone number is 0121 do one there you go haha <laughs> I made a funny joke <laughs> so now if we click send you can see we get back true now that does that mean it's done does that mean it's worked well let's find out let's go to friends all let's click send and as you can see we now have a new entry in our database right here so that is how we add a new friend via a post request but what happens if you want to um what happens if you want to delete a friend let's say you don't like this friend and you want to get rid of them you don't want to miss your friend anymore well i you're in luck let's take this copy this go to the bottom here and now we're going to have instead of a post we're going to have a delete request and once again we're going to pass through an id Let's remove all this and call an ID and set it equal to our args ID again. And finally, we're just going to delete from friends where ID is equal to ID. Now, inside of here, we can actually prepare our statement still. We don't need to bind anything. Um, and we can then just make the result execute like normal and send the same status code. So that is all we need to do just to delete someone. So let's go back. Let's create a new area here. Let's just copy this, paste this in. And instead of friends, we're going to pass through. Uh, did I do that right? This should be friends forward slash delete as we're going to end up having a miss. So let's just say delete forward slash ID. There we go. So let's go back and let's just put in here friends delete and then let's just say one we're going to delete number one um, and let's change this to a delete request and now if we hit enter you can see we get true but has it worked let's go to friends all see we normally have three if we click send again you can see we now only have uh, test two and myself so there you go guys that is all it takes to create a simple api inside of slim php now i hope you have learned enough to be able to start building your own api with this it's really good if you want to get up a simple quick api um, running even if it's just for testing or getting stuff started and if you want to even get a little bit more in depth and create a secure one you can do that as well it's all so simple and the documentation for this is incredible so if you go over to the uh, slim documentation it will really help you out but anyway guys thank you for watching this video if you've enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up smash that subscribe button and leave any comments or feedback or any questions you have down below. Thank you for watching the video guys and peace out.